A 160,000 kilogram steel module, the weight of 25 elephants, hangs in the air. It's being lifted by the largest crane in New Zealand, a 1,200 ton monster, and it's just one of 80 giant pieces. This is the One New Zealand Stadium at Takaha, a 30,000 seat enclosed fortress rising in Christchurch. But the most shocking fact isn't how heavy it is. It's that engineers made the roof safer by removing 1,000 tons of steel from its design. This 47-meter-tall giant is being built on land that can literally turn to liquid, sitting right next to two active earthquake faults. So how do you build a 30,000-seat arena on ground that can swallow a building whole? To understand this stadium, you have to understand the scar it's built on. In 2010 and 2011, a series of powerful earthquakes devastated Christchurch. The city's beloved stadium at Lancaster Park was so badly damaged it was ruined. It was later completely demolished. The city, a hub for sports and culture, was left without a major venue. This new stadium was identified in the Central City Recovery Plan back in 2012 as a critical piece of infrastructure. For years, the city worked to make it happen securing the land and going through study after study to make sure they got it right. This is the final and most important anchor project for the entire city's rebuild. It's officially named Takaha, a Maori name gifted to the project that means the strength. It had to be a symbol, a fortress that could withstand the very forces that destroyed its predecessor. But to build it, engineers first had to solve the very problem that caused so much destruction in the first place, the ground itself. The stadium is being built in a part of Christchurch known to be near two active faults. But the bigger, more immediate problem is something called liquefaction. This is a terrifying event. It's what happens when an earthquake's violent shaking meets wet, sandy soil, like the kind found in Christchurch. The shaking increases the water pressure and the soil loses all its strength, behaving just like a liquid. You cannot build a $683 million stadium on ground that can turn to soup. Before a single design was drawn, geologists and engineers spent years studying the site. They confirmed the liquefaction risk was severe. The engineering team had a few choices. They could try to drill and hammer massive, deep piles hundreds of meters down until they hit solid bedrock. Or they could remake the ground itself they chose to create a massive ground improvement scheme. This was a smarter choice. Deep piles would have been incredibly complex, expensive, and carried a huge carbon footprint. This new solution was better. It means they essentially built a giant, super-strong concrete raft under the stadium. This raft spreads the building's enormous weight over a huge area and ties the entire foundation together. The scale of this underground work is hard to believe. It took 55 major separate concrete pours just to create this substructure. In total, crews poured nearly 26,000 cubic meters of concrete. And inside that concrete is a spider web of steel, more than 4,800 tons of reinforcing steel or rebar. That is an incredible amount of steel just to make the ground stable. Before they even built one single seat, this massive foundation is a precisely engineered grid designed by seismic specialists like Lewis Bradford to hold the foundation together as a single solid mat if the soil underneath it ever tries to move. This design is built to a high standard called SLS2, meaning it's designed to be functional and usable even after a very strong earthquake. With a solid platform built, the team could finally go vertical but the seismic solution above ground was even more surprising. It involved making the building weaker in all the right places. This might sound strange, but to make a building survive a massive earthquake, you do not want it to be perfectly stiff. A stiff building is brittle. When it's pushed too far, it snaps. You want a building to be ductile. You want it to be able to flex, bend, and move to absorb the energy. To do this, engineers used a special device called a Buckling Restrained Brace, or BRB. These are the largest BRBs ever used in New Zealand. So what are they? Think of it like this. If you take a dry twig, it feels strong, but if you bend it, it snaps. That's a normal rigid brace. Now, think of a simple paperclip. You can bend it back and forth, over and over before it breaks. It absorbs all that energy by deforming. 
A BRB is a giant, high-tech paperclip. It's a solid steel core hidden inside a concrete-filled steel casing. When the earthquake hits, these special braces are designed to stretch and compress. They soak up the seismic energy, acting like giant shock absorbers in a car. This protects the main columns and beams of the stadium from taking the full destructive force of the quake. The local engineers at Holmes were so committed to this system that they upgraded their own testing machines just to prove the performance of these specific BRBs. These braces are part of a complex structural design for site-specific seismic spectra. That means the engineers didn't just build to the minimum legal code. They studied the exact earthquake waves most likely to hit this specific spot in Christchurch and designed the building to fight them. The stadium is divided into three main stand zones, the west, south and east stands. The seating bowl itself is a strong mix of concrete shear walls at the bottom and a lighter steel-framed system at the top. The BRBs are the critical links that tie all of this together. And this brings us back to that shocking fact from the beginning. This BRB system is so smart and so efficient at absorbing energy that it allowed the designers to change the entire roof structure. They swapped out old-style tension rods for these new BRBs. The result? The new design was so much more efficient that it reduced the roof's primary steel weight by 1,000 tons. By using these flexible fuses, the entire building became safer. It also became 1,000 tons lighter. A lighter building has less mass for an earthquake to shake, and a lighter building is easier to hold up, which meant the massive concrete foundations we just talked about could also be made smaller. This saved materials, saved money, and created a building that exceeds all of New Zealand's minimum earthquake codes. This lighter, smarter design was critical because the roof itself would be one of the most complex steel structures ever built in the country. The roof of Te Kaha is a genuine megastructure. The stadium itself is huge, measuring 232 metres long and 195 metres wide. That's longer than two rugby fields laid end to end, and it stands 47 metres tall, about the height of a 15-storey office building. The entire structure is being built like a giant 3D puzzle. This 3D puzzle was also a test of extreme efficiency. Engineers created a computer script for every single steel connection in the frame. Usually, on a big project, you design connections in groups and just use the strongest design for the whole group, which is wasteful. But here, they analyzed each one individually. This meant no steel was wasted. This saving is the equivalent of taking 7,233 truckloads of concrete out of the project's carbon footprint. The roof structure is made of over 80 massive steel modules. Each module weighs at least 75,000 kilograms. The construction team had to lift these pieces one by one. The entire process was complex, but it all came down to a huge milestone. Lifting the final two pieces. These last two modules, lifted at the stadium's northern end, were the heaviest of the entire project. Each one stood 37 meters tall and weighed around 160,000 kilograms. That's like lifting 25 large elephants at once. To do it, they had to bring in the largest crawler crane in all of New Zealand, a 1,200-ton monster working together with a 600-ton crane. Placing these final pieces was the moment the entire steel superstructure was finally closed. But here is another hidden engineering trick. The stadium's roof and its seating bowl are actually two separate structures. The roof is freestanding. Why? Earthquakes. During a quake, the tall, lighter roof and the shorter, heavier seating bowl will shake at different speeds. By designing them as independent structures, engineers make sure they can move separately without slamming into each other and tearing the building apart. The dome-like, oculus shape of the roof also gives it extra strength and rigidity. But this giant steel roof created a new problem. The stadium was designed for rugby and football, which need natural grass. How do you keep a lawn alive inside a 47-meter tall box? This was one of the biggest challenges. The stadium had to be fully covered. Christchurch weather can be unpredictable, and for a multi-use arena to host concerts and events all year round, you need a roof. 
but it also had to have a natural grass playing field. Natural grass can't grow in the dark. This makes Te Kaha one of only two stadiums in the entire world with a fully enclosed roof and a real natural grass pitch. How did they do it? The roof isn't solid. It's made of a high-tech transparent material called ETFE. ETFE, or ethylene tetrafluoroethylene, is a miracle material for stadiums. It's a strong, durable plastic film, 100 times lighter than glass, which helped with that 1,000-ton steel saving we talked about. But most importantly, it's completely transparent to the full spectrum of sunlight. It lets in all the light the grass needs to grow while keeping 30,000 fans and the players warm and dry. It's a giant greenhouse for sports. This flexibility is key. The stadium isn't just for rugby and concerts. It's designed to host everything. Football, rugby league, even esports, tennis and boxing. The 30,000 seat capacity includes 25,000 permanent seats and a 5,000 seat temporary scalable section. The stadium also includes 23 corporate suites and a massive 1,150 square meter function lounge. The ETFE roof makes all of this possible, rain or shine. This precious turf is also protected by the stadium's multi-use design. When it's time for a big concert, which can hold up to 36,000 people, the engineers designed a special stage pocket at the northern end. 5,000 temporary seats are removed and the stage is built in that area, not on the grass. This design protects the field and makes it a truly flexible venue. And the sustainability goes beyond the roof. The project is an all-electric venue with no gas on site, and it includes charging stations for electric vehicles and over 20,000 square meters of new vegetation and green spaces for the public. So, they solved the shaking and they solved the sunlight, but they created one last monster, a 30,000-seat echo chamber. This was the final hidden engineering battle. The stadium team had two goals that completely contradicted each other. First, they had to design the bowl to have amazing acoustics inside, amplifying the sound for concerts and the roar of the crowd. Second, they had to minimize all that noise from spilling out into the neighboring city and apartments. A 30,000-seat stadium, fully enclosed, creates a massive echo chamber. A loud concert can reach 104 decibels. That's as loud as a jet engine. If that sound escaped, it would be a nightmare for the city. The solution is a series of acoustic louvres built into the stadium's walls, especially on the west side and high up in the seating bowl. These aren't just simple vents to let air in. They are high-tech sound traps. They are specially angled and designed to let fresh air flow through the stadium, but they catch the sound waves. The sound energy hits the louvers and is either absorbed or reflected up and away from the neighborhoods. This acoustic control is a two-way street. While the louvers stop sound from getting out, a massive internal sound system is being installed to make sure the sound inside is perfect. Workers are installing 16 huge speaker arrays up in the roof trusses. Each array holds eight to 10 separate speakers. This allows the audio engineers to aim the sound precisely at the fan sections, ensuring every one of the 30,000 seats has clear, powerful audio while avoiding aiming sound at the reflective ETFE roof or the walls, which would create more echoes. It's a total sound control environment. The result? A 104 decibel concert inside the stadium drops to just 80 decibels at the nearest apartment building. This massive reduction allows the arena to be a good neighbor right in the heart of the city. This level of engineering comes with a final price tag of 683 million New Zealand dollars, shared between the Christchurch City Council and the New Zealand government. The cost caused major controversy. In 2021, the council, worried about rising costs, voted to cut the stadium's capacity to 25,000 seats. But after a public outcry, it was revealed keeping the 30,000-seat design would only cost an extra $50 million, not the $88 million they were first told. They reversed the decision and the 30,000-seat stadium was saved. Despite the debates, the Kotui team is hitting its milestones. By early 2024, the massive steel superstructure was complete. 
As of late 2024, crews are installing 18 kilometers of railing for the 25,000 permanent seats, and the project is running on budget and on time. Major construction is set to finish by the end of this year, and the stadium is on track to open in April 2026, with the first event already scheduled, the Super Rugby Super Round. So, Tekaha, the strength, is more than a stadium. It is a $683 million, 30,000-seat symbol. It's a statement written in 10,775 tons of precast concrete and thousands of tons of intelligent steel that a city can rebuild stronger than before. If you want to see more of the world's most incredible mega builds, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. And let us know in the comments what mega project we should cover next.